The Mecca Madison Square Garden. Game three about to begin. And the starting lineups first for the visiting Miami Heat. Tim Hardaway, Dan Marley in the backcourt. P.J. Brown, Alonzo Mourning, and Jamal Mashburn. And the same starting five for the Heat and similar for the New York Knicks. No lineup changes in this series. Charlie Ward and Allen Houston at guard. Kurt Thomas, Patrick Ewing, and Larry Johnson up front. Pat Riley coaching the Miami Heat, of course, and Jeff Van Gundy, who used to coach with Pat Riley, the head coach, trying to get over the 500 mark in his uh, playoff career. And now, Pat Riley and Jeff Van Gundy, for different reasons, need this series. Riley, of course, looking to get the Heat out of the first round, something that he has not done in two out of the three previous series. And Van Gundy, well, he could be fighting for his future. The tip controlled by the Knicks. Now, both teams are excellent defensively. In game two, Miami was able to cut off all lane penetration and by Kurt, the Knicks. Kurt Thomas picking up the foul and a uh, slow start to this game. So Thomas picking up the first foul of the game. Well, unfortunately for him, that's why his time was cut back so much in game two because he was in constant foul trouble and all five of them were silly fouls. Alonzo Mourning has been a giant as Hubie uh, chronicled 27 and 26 points in each of the first two games Patrick Ewing out to meet him and with seven on the clock Mourning misses the first shot of the game now, if, you, if you're uh, Pat Riley you're very happy because as long as you get the ball movement you want Mourning to take him off the dribble you're a little bit upset about the fact that he didn't take him off the dribble and go hard to the rim Ewing however hits his first shot of the game and that should be a big boost. Patrick Ewing, who was only four for 12 from the field in game number two, puts the Knicks in front. Ward is guarding Hardaway as expected. And Thomas, the power forward, is on Morning, the center. And Morning, one-on-one, -on -one, they have not doubled against Alonzo, and his hook shot goes out, but it's corralled by Hardaway. See, Thomas is very strong with the forearm and the upper body. And any time that morning goes for the hook, he chests him. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Hardaway with a good pass into P.J. Brown. And the basket counts in a foul. Hardaway had 11 assists, even though he has yet to get on track scoring-wise in the series. And P.J. Brown ties the score. See, they're doing a very good job in finding the free people once the Knicks trap the pick and roll. They have an advantage from the foul line down, and Hardaway has been able to pick out the guy who's open. Larry Johnson uh, fouled P.J. Brown, so the Heat take a 3-2 lead. Ward in the backcourt with Allen Houston, who was playing despite the fact that he has the flu and did not take part in the shoot-around this afternoon. Larry Johnson on the perimeter, now in the hands of Houston, who is throttled by Marley in game two. Ward for three, and he misses. Ward had two from the three-point range in the loss in Miami. See, I was surprised that Houston did not go into Ewing. They were front, the Ewing was fronted, and he had plenty of room to catch a pass and make a move. P.J. Brown goes out to Hardaway, and Hardaway misses. Hardaway struggling from the perimeter, and of course, the question is, how much is he hobbled by that hyper-extended knee that he suffered late in February? Hardaway getting into the paint, feeding Brown, charging in off the baseline, misses the shot, but a Nick foul, and it's their third of this first quarter. Yeah, I was happy to see P.J. Brown take it strong to the rim that time, Dick, because usually he will settle for that baseline jump shot where he shoots a high percentage. But by taking it to the rim, you are forcing the Knicks into foul trouble. That's what you have to keep thinking about in a series like this, to get fouls on that front line so that they have to go to the bench. Ewing commits the personal foul. Right now, let's check in with Craig Sager. Well, Dick, you talked about Dan Marley's injury. It is a fractured bone spur in his right collarbone. It happened late in the third quarter of game two. As he took the floor tonight, he told me he does not know what to expect when he has the first collision. But he does not think it will affect his mobility nor his shooting. The Knicks are aware of the injury. Alan Houston says he will not change his game plan, but he will be very aggressive running the two picks. Pat Riley says, I don't know what to expect, but I do know he's one of the toughest guys I've ever been around. That is Craig and... Uh... Allen Houston has his shot blocked inside. Marley was inside along with Morning. It is a 5-2 Miami lead, and Marley misses a three, and it's tapped back out by Brown inside, and Alonzo Morning, good passing by the Miami Heat, and they're up by five. In this series, 
Miami only has seven offensive rebounds a game and New York eight. Now, the reason why we're bringing this out, on a good night, both teams would get anywhere from 13 to 15. So you look at them, they're tough defensively, they're tough against you trying to get into the lane, but then they're limiting you to one shot at both ends. That's why anytime you get a freebie tonight, Dick, you gotta be really happy. Three offensive rebounds off the start for the Miami Heat, Hubie, and in talking with Jeff Van Gundy before the game, and you said, what's number one on your wish list? He said, I'd like us to do a better job rebounding, and that's why he perhaps called that 20-second timeout. Also at the offensive end of the floor, Dick, when they had that nice screen for Houston, he went down inside, the pass was delivered, he went up soft, he hesitated, and Marley, who was behind him, had an opportunity to block that shot. Coming up the elevator with Herb Williams, who uh, probably won't play, an 18-year veteran. He says home court is not the thing. Everyone knows each other on this team, what they're going to do. It's who comes out with the most intensity and who goes after the loose balls and gets the rebound. Charlie Ward on the outside, and the foul is called against Jamal Mashburn. And... Uh, Larry Johnson will inbound. So nearly three minutes gone by, first quarter. The Heat leading 7-2. to two. Johnson, who has played his best basketball of the year against the Miami Heat, finds a wide-open Allen Houston. Houston misses, and the morning gets the rebound. See, they're the ones you got to make. Dan Marley was caught doubling back on the post and then lost his man. Jamal Mashburn hits the basket, and uh, Pat Riley would like nothing more. Number one on his wish list would be for Mashburn to get underway. He showed signs of breaking through with nine points in the first half. Didn't even play the fourth quarter in game number two. And Allen Houston, after missing an open shot, hits it here, and it's still a five-point Miami lead. Well, the Knicks fans, the Knicks coaching staff, the Knicks players, everyone realized this young guy is capable of getting you 25 to 30. But what you'd like to see is more consistency. And I'm happy that he hit early, and maybe he'll get him off big. Big game number one for Allen Houston. Hardaway bobbles the pass momentarily. Eight on the shot clock. Houston picking up Mashburn with two seconds on the clock. Long range, short. And P.J. Brown gets the ball, so that's four offensive rebounds already for the Heat. Hey, Patrick Ewing, if the ball comes to him, he's in great shape. He has the damage Achilles, and he gets major swelling. It has not worked out since the last game, and you have to give him a lot of credit because he's sucking up a great deal of pain. But you cannot look for athleticism. He's not going to be able to get the rebound unless the ball comes close to him. And, of course, he's uh, a liability at one-on-one -on -one, uh, defending because he does not have that lateral movement. Ten on the shot clock for the Heat, and Kurt Thomas runs out at Hardaway, and here is P.J. Brown who travels. Good defense. Ewing went right at Brown and forced him to turn it over. See, they trapped the screen and roll from the left side. Hardaway kept his dribble and took it into the middle of the floor, but the Knicks rotation, excellent. Only one time in NBA history as a number eight seed beat a number one in the first round. That was in the West back in 94 with Denver over Seattle. And uh, Charlie Ward with an air ball from the corner claims he was hit. So it is still nine to four in favor of the Heat. I see you got to take him now. Just don't settle for a jump shot. There you go. And he doesn't, and Morning beats him to the basket, and the Knicks will play. They want Thomas on it, but Ewing was uh, caught on Morning one-on-one, -on -one and a timeout full-time, this time on the Knicks, leading now, trailing by seven points. <laughs> Strong move by Alonzo. That's there any time from the wing or from the foul line. The Heat jump out on the Knicks 11-4 early here in the first quarter. Chris Rock in the crowd and uh, filled with celebrities, as you might expect for this big game. Uh, outstanding actor Kevin Bacon as well. And uh, the guard is filled. And some of these are loyal fans, and some of these people are seeing the game for the first time this year, and why not? Well, back in the 80s, Kevin uh, Bacon was at almost every home game. And there is Allen Houston driving straight to the basket and draws the foul. He was not to be denied, and Houston 
Brings the Knicks to within five, and Alonzo Mourning picking up his first personal foul. See, I'm happy for Allen because in game two, he had six turnovers. Any time that he tried to make a move to the basket, he would invariably either travel or they would strip him from the basketball. But tonight, that is encouraging for the Knicks because when he's going to the basket, it opens up a ton of things. Three-point play by Houston brings the Knicks to within four with... Five minutes gone by here in the first quarter. In the first five minutes, Nick, the big surprise, Miami, eight to one on the boards. And Mashburn driving the baseline, and a well-executed play as Hardaway with another nifty pass inside. So the Heat leading 13 to seven. Mashburn with four, Brown with five, and Morning with four. Front line accounting for all of the Heat points thus far. Here's Larry Johnson, double teamed with Morning against the P.J. Brown. And good defense inside for the Heat. They get the ball back, leading by six. Pat Riley is trying to get the break. He's trying to get them to push the ball hard, even if it's a three, four on three, five on four. Get it up and look for the advantage. 50% shooting and nine rebounds to one for the Heat. Hardaway hitting the medium range jumper. And it's 15 to seven and the Miami Heat starting out as they have been assured so many times on the road this year, they play with a lot of confidence. How about Timmy Hardaway shooting 21% and 11% in threes? Unheard of numbers for him. No question. Two games. Yeah, because that's his strength. That's absolutely. The three point shot. Here is Ewing with the turnaround. Patrick Ewing with his second medium or long range shot for him. And it's 15 to 9, Miami. Morning guarded by Thomas. And again, single coverage on Alonzo. Spinning baseline. And that time, Thomas did a great job. Yeah, well, he's very strong. Yeah, he's deceiving. He's a very powerful young man. Ward hitting a two. Charlie Ward getting the basket. And the Knicks and Heat matching hoops now. Up and down they go. Miami's lead is four. This is critical because Ward and Childs, between them, are only getting seven points a game, Dick. They need a little bit more than that, maybe 12 to 14. That will take the cushion and the pressure off the other players. So it's not all on Houston, Johnson, and Spring. Oh, absolutely point not. Point guards uh, can do the job. See, because when you do that, you eliminate Timmy Hardaway from leaving the point guard and double-teaming any dribbler that's coming into the painted area. Larry Johnson in a reach-in foul, and uh, that is his second personal, so he leaves the game, and Latrell Sprewell comes into the game uh, maybe earlier than Jeff Van Gundy had wanted him to, but Sprewell is in there now, and the lead is four. With five minutes to go, and a steal by Sprewell. And he's fouled by Hardaway, but as Sprewell said today, maybe a dunk or a steal early when I come in will generate the crowd because he feeds off the crowd here at the Garden. Well, Sprewell has had an outstanding season, and one of the main reasons is the fact, not just because he gets you 16 points a game, but because he's one of the best steal guys in the business. He's excellent off the ball in anticipation. He's got a long stride. This is a smart foul by Timmy Hardaway. Make him make the foul shots. And if there's one player on the Knicks who really is aware of what is going around around him, it's uh, Latrell Sprewell, who loves the crowd, and the crowd has taken to him. Remember when he was acquired from Golden State, that controversial deal, you know, about Sprewell and his suspension with the P.J. Carlissimo incident. He didn't know how the crowd was going to react to him this year. That's but right. he's a fan favorite. Yes, he is. Well, they like the, his spirit, and they like the way that he plays so hard and that he attacks the rim and gets to the foul line. New York people like that. They want to see the guys give that effort night in and night out. One of two for Sprewell with 440 to go. The lead is three. And uh, the turnaround by Hardaway and Charlie Ward with the person. When Timmy Hardaway is healthy, he will post up quite a bit during the course of a game, mainly because he's an excellent post-up guy with his back to the basket. Quite a few moves. Now, tonight, he's razor sharp in his passing. Here's Brown with the extra pass to Marley for three. And Sprewell the rebound. That's the second miss from beyond the three-point arc by Marley. Knicks trailing by three. They were down by as many as eight points. Ewing, again, cat and mouse with the morning. Ten on the shot clock. Determined to go up with it and scores. And I'll tell you, the crowd has murmured when he's taking shots. I don't think they mind it when it goes through the basket. No, that's because of the big article in the New York paper today. They're saying 
Pat, why can't Patrick's ego get the message? Just rebound. You're getting 15 a game. Pass the basketball and stop shooting. Because when you get the basketball, everything stops. You so saw Patrick read that today, and he just came out and says, you know what? I'm going to shoot every time <laughs> they throw it to me. And he's three for three right now. <laughs> the personal is on. Kurt Thomas, so the Knicks starting forwards in foul trouble early with Larry Johnson on the bench with two. Kurt Thomas now has two, and Chris Dudley will come into the game. Dudley, the 6'11", 12-year veteran from Yale, will enter as morning misses the free throw. Thomas leaves the game with two personal. During the course of the season, Morning got to the line nine times. In games one and two, he's getting to the game, to the line nine times. During the year, he's a 65% foul shooter. It's the only weak part of his total offensive, you know, arsenal. Morning misses both free throws, but the back tap comes out to the heat. The Knicks on a 7-0 run with four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Dick Stockton, Hubie Brown, and Craig Sager, game three here at the Garden. Now Dudley's a good shot blocker. And Dudley, Morning, passes into the corner to Mashburn. And here come the Knicks, who are down by one, looking to take their second lead of the game. And Sprewell, who is wide open, gives it to them. The Knicks, who got the first basket of the game, now lead it 16-15. to 15. Uh, Good time now by Pat Riley. They just went on a little mini run. Sprewell out on the break. When he launches that shot, he looks like it's an awkward release. But that is his style. Now, the basketball is right here with Charlie Ward. This is Sprewell. Sprewell will come to the outside lane. Now, keep an eye on him because he's very, very quick in the open floor. Now, once he makes the catch, he's so productive in going strong to the rim. But if you give him the distance like they did there, they played it safe, he'll take that 17, 18-foot shot. Since uh, Latrell Sprewell came into the game when uh, Larry Johnson went out with two fouls, the Knicks are on a 9 to nothing run. So uh, Sprewell giving the Knicks a different dimension than they've had in recent years, more of an up-tempo uh, style with, as opposed to their blue-collar style before, and it's worked for them. I want to see Mashburn take advantage of Sprewell down inside on the post. I know they're going to we're working morning right now. They want to get him going. But also, you got an advantage with Mashburn. No way can Sprewell play him down tight. Let's see if they do that, Hubie, as uh, Chris Dudley fouls uh, Alonzo Morning. And Morning will go to the line. The Knicks are in the penalty. Morning missed uh, two free throws the last time he was at the line. He wears the goggles because of the fractured eye socket, but does not use them when he's on the free throw line. And he's now 0 for 3. See, Dudley is such a, a, a good matchup for the Knicks because he has the lateral movement. He's an excellent shot blocker, terrific rebounder, and when he fouls you, he fouls you hard because he knows he's going to have limited time and he'll use his six fouls. That's his strength on the defensive side. Don't ask him to provide any offensive punch and certainly don't ask him to make a free throw because that has been uh, his Achilles heel. We're tied at 16 with 3.20 to go in the first quarter. That's because he has that beautiful jump hook. He told me to remind you about his jump Good. hook. Well, tell him you did. <laughs> foul is on P.J. Brown. And that is the fourth team foul against the Miami Heat. Team split the season series 2-2 and 3-3 uh, overall this year with uh, the teams dividing the first two games in Miami. Game four will be Friday night here at Madison Square Garden. And if necessary, game five will be Sunday in Miami. Brown knocking it away from Ewing. 12 seconds on the shot clock for New York. See, when you set a back screen, Spreewell setting a back screen for Ewing. He's coming on a diagonal cut to the box. Charlie Ward has got to give Ewing time to post up. If they're going to front him, let him post and freeze the man. Marley is blanketing Allen Houston again. Houston trying to get some room and illegal defense called against the Miami Heat. That is their first violation. Pat Riley, who coached uh, here in New York for four years and got the Knicks to the finals in 94 before they lost to the Houston Rockets in seven games, trying to do the same thing and advance the Miami Heat. And a rancorous departure for Pat Riley. Ward getting into Dudley. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Ewing going up strong. 
Doesn't hit iron and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Knicks. Well, I think, first of all, Dudley was shocked that they passed him the ball down on the baseline. He was behind the backboard with his back to the baseline. What could he do with the ball? What about that hook shot? No, but see, yelled. right away, Ewing yelled. That's right, Chris, to me. <laughs> Get it to me, because I, I know what we can do with it. Tied at 16, 240 to play in the first quarter. Here is Marley, who has missed two twos so far. Morning will fire over Dudley and hit. Alonzo Morning now with seven points. He is the game's high scorer. Ewing with six tops the Knicks as the Heat lead by two. They were up by as many as eight points. The Knicks came back to lead by one. So it's been a tight first quarter. Sprewell picked up by Brown. Sprewell misses, but Dudley back taps out again to the Knicks. And they're going to call Marley for the blocking foul on Houston, quickly trying to get around him. Yeah, see, Marley guessed, and that was a good guess, because he jumped right in on that crossover. Now, just watch as uh, uh, the play is made. Now, as Allen makes the move and goes, now, you see, if, if, if you got a different angle on that, that could have been called an offensive foul. The reason is, is that Marley was planted, and Houston's left shoulder, or his right shoulder, caught Marley and put him down on the floor. Keith Haskins, who did a terrific defensive job on Latrell Sprewell after not seeing action in game one, replaces Dan Marley and Terry Porter, the uh, Graybeard, the oldest player on the Miami Heat, 36 year old veteran who played so well off the bench for Pat Riley, has come in for Tim Hardaway. So the Heat now have Mashburn handling the ball with Brown, Morning, Haskins, and Porter. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. This takes the pressure off of Terry Porter where they can run him down on the baseline screens. And again, uh, Dudley one-on-one -on -one with Morning going around and a block. And it was Allen Houston who helped Dudley defensively. Here's Porter. That doesn't fall. Tip on oh, P.J. Yes. Brown. P.J. Brown with a tip in and Brown who has become an offensive force for the Miami Heat. Remember, they lost Deshaun Leonard and Jamal Mashburn for a good part of the year with injuries. But more important, the Heat now with six offensive boards. They lead by two. Ward goes low down to Dudley. Dudley's going to put one up. And there's that hook shot that I told you about. Oh, yeah. You see, right now you're, out, you know, you're like a typical guy. Now you want to lead the parade. I told you, the young guy, he's got that shot. I've, I've known it all along, Huey. Yeah. <laughs> We're tied at 20. Morning with that. It's Ewing to go in the air and drives in. And the tip again by Brown. This time it doesn't go. The Knicks two-on-two situation with Ward goes behind his back to Houston with under a minute to go. 16 on the shot clock. Here is Ewing with a double team. Ward is open. And his shot is off. Knicks have missed several wide-open uh, shots tonight. And they're going to call oh, Ewing with the foul. Hits him with a technical foul, as well he should. They get Patrick pushing off underneath to get that rebound. And then whatever happened there in the initial move. Now just keep an eye on Ewing as the shot goes up. Now you see they're catching him with a push right there in the back. Well, we've had a lot of pushing at both ends of the floor. That's why he's so upset. But now whatever he said here, he hit the magic word. And as soon as that happens, that's automatic. So Terry Porter will go to the line for the technical foul. And the foul, and you're looking at a, uh, an angry Patrick Ewing. And uh, more important for the Knicks, their entire starting front line in foul trouble in the first quarter as Larry Johnson and Kirk Thomas had to leave with two fouls. And now Patrick Ewing goes out of the game with two, replaced by Larry Johnson. Now Porter missed the technical foul and the free throws coming up now for P.J. Brown. The Knicks are very small. When you look out there and you see Ward and Sprewell and Houston in there, and then you bring in a Larry Johnson or now they're coming Camby. with Camby. Right. Now they need a big game from Camby. Not only in the shot blocking, because during the course of the year on two occasions he blocked eight. Now, they know he can shot block, but where he is a negative is at the defensive end against post people. His physique is not uh, the kind that could handle right. the people like Alonzo Mourning. And, of course, uh, Pat, uh, Jeff Van Gundy would like to see uh, Camby do a little bit better off the defensive glass. In any event, the Heat lead by two, 13 on the shot clock with a half a minute remaining here in the first quarter. Charlie Ward penetrating and going up with it. Oh! 
The rebound taken down by Keith Askins. Very impressive first quarter for the Miami Heat. Even though the game is close, they have played their kind of ball. See, the reason why Mashburn holds a lot is because that relieves the pressure off for the guards and gives them a chance for a blow. Shot clock and game clock practically similar. Jamal go. Mashburn holding off the defense gets the basket, and Mashburn now with six points coming out strong in this first quarter. Dudley picking up his second personal foul, and Mashburn will try to give the Heat a five-point lead with 7.7 .7 seconds remaining in the first quarter. A silent Madison Square Garden. They have not had much reason to explode in this quarter. The Knicks did go on a 9-0 run at one point. Time running out. Sprewell charging down court, and it's taken away by Askins. And the final shot by Brown falls short. But the Miami Heat have the measure of the New York Knicks. And their front court has done the job. 23 of their 25 points have come from their starting front court. So after one, Miami 25, New York 20. Dan Marley has aggravated the fractured bone spur on his right collarbone. We saw the play where he attempted to get a charging foul from Allen Houston. As you see, the two right shoulders go head to head. Marley immediately came out of the game, went to the bench. Ron Culp, the trainer, put ice on the shoulder. Pat Riley asked him how he was. He said he'd be ready to go back in. But right now, the ice is to ease the pain and also to reduce the swelling. All right, Craig. Uh, Marley 0 for 2. Uh, so far in this game, and uh, there's the shooting percentages with uh, Miami being outshot by the Knicks, but leading by five points as we start the second quarter. Clarence Weatherspoon has come into the game for Miami. Askins on the offensive rebound, blocked by Camby inside. So Camby doing what the Knicks wanted when they acquired him in the Charles Oakley trade with Toronto. Knicks first possession of the second quarter. Mashburn guarding Sprewell. Askins trying to double, and it's off the foot of uh, Sprewell. And it'll be taken out by the Miami Heat on the turnover. Yeah, Sprewell was so concerned trying to get body contact because when you get body contact, you spin away from the side that the defense is. And unfortunately for him, as he made that spin, he just tripped and fell onto the floor. Whistle away from the ball is... The Knicks committing a foul. Terry Porter starts the second quarter at point guard with Askins, Brown, Weatherspoon, and Mashburn. That foul is on Camby, his first. The Heat already uh, with 10 offensive rebounds, uh, Hubie. Oh, uh, it's just the load. Uh, it's it's shocking because, like we said before, one team is averaging seven, the other eight for for the two games. So you just know it's out of the ordinary here tonight. Camby getting the uh, steal, knocking the ball away from Weatherspoon, and here is Allen Houston. Tough angle for Larry Johnson that time, and a bad pass inside, knocked away by P.J. Brown. Well, the Knicks do turn the ball over, you know, 16 times a game, so it isn't something that we have not seen before. Their pass, and one, once the ball gets out of the hands of the point guard, they're questionable passers, all of the other people. Porter is double-teamed and loses the ball out of bounds, so... The Heat turn it over, then the Knicks do it on the other end, and now Miami loses the ball. So uh, that uh, causes some consternation on the face of Pat Riley, and the Knicks with the ball to down by five. Now you see, you got to call this. Now the, play, the players are upset, but you have to call it. You cannot hold the cutters just because the guy is putting it back screen. And that's what's happening. They're grabbing on as the guy is coming off the screen. And that is uh, Askins with the, the personal foul. And the Knicks have been asking for that since uh, early in this game. Houston tries to force the pass. Askins got a hand on it. Two on one now. P.J. Brown, and he travels. So P.J. Brown travels before he runs into Chris Childs. And so we have uh, played more than a minute and a half of this uh, second quarter, and neither team has scored. Chris Childs injured his right wrist. Now, we know that during the course of the year, Childs was very productive coming off the bench, not only as a scorer for you, but a big-time three-point shooter. Tim Hardaway back in the game at point guard for the Miami Heat. And there is Larry Johnson on the screen and uh, spot up. They continue to miss the cut as it travels. Houston hits the shot just inside the line. Allen Houston 
with nine points leading the Knicks score as P.J. Brown nine for Miami and uh, Miami's lead is three. A nip and tuck game as we anticipated. Uh, virtually all of the games would be in this series. The Knicks won big by 20 points in game one. Weatherspoon on the missed shot and the Knicks come back trying to cut the lead again and Askins strips it away from Latrose Prewell. Keith Askins the best perimeter defender does it inside for the heat and driving in for the basket that time is Terry Porter in this series Terry Porter is one of the top finishers that we have on the perimeter people anytime he's going to the hole you better get to him and can be finds Larry Johnson underneath and he'll get the basket and the foul as Porter winds up on the, the floor but Askins will pick up his second personal foul and the Knicks down by three timeout call we'll be right back with Miami leading by three here early in the second quarter and back at Madison Square Garden with the heat leading by three coming up tonight on Turner Sports playoff action continues on TBS at 930 game three as the Blazers try to close out the Suns in three straight following our game it's game three between the Jazz and the Kings and that's turned into a good one with the Kings winning game two the series is tied one and one NBC anchor Tom Brokaw and uh, here's an actor who's been here for years Peter Boyle huh? Peter Boyle has had season tickets I think as long as this new building has been erected and also back in the days of the old guard Peter loves this game at Old Garden on uh, 8th Eighth Avenue and 50th. and 50th Street. That's right. With the smoke hanging above the hey, court. Every seat in that <laughs> old garden was a good seat because you felt like you were right on top of the players. Larry Johnson on the free throw line. And he misses it, but uh, the Heat guilty of a lane violation, so uh, LJ will get another opportunity. The Knicks have uh, Chris Childs at the point with Latrell Sprewell, Larry Johnson, Chris Dudley, and Marcus Camby. Patrick Ewing on the bench with six. Kurt Thomas picked up two early fouls. There is the big edge for the Miami Heat starting forwards. 14-point advantage over the Knicks starting forwards who got into foul trouble. Not only are the points there, but the rebounds are also there. So they're backing up their game. Larry Johnson missed both free throws, uh, and he got the bonus there. And now they call Tim Hardaway with the foul, the offensive foul. Very subtle, but they got him on it. See, Chris Childs is an excellent defender. He's six foot three. He's very strong. He's known as a defender. And when you're known in this league as a defender, you'll get the calls. Does an especially good job against Porter. Larry Johnson driving the baseline. Camby with the offensive rebound, and it goes for him. Marcus Camby with his first points of the game after no blocks, no dunks, and no defensive rebounds in game two, but he had a good opening contest. Driving is Alonzo Mourning against both Camby and Dudley, and the New York foul is on Child. Anytime that Mourning has gone to the basket tonight, something good has happened. Either he scores or he gets fouled. At the other end of the floor, the Knicks continue to go to Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson has no game tonight. Every time that he comes into the lane, he's coming in weak. He cannot outjump anybody in the paint, and nothing good is coming down. Now, fortunately for them, Camby bailed him out on that last attempt. But they need Larry Johnson to get going here. He's had big games against the Heat, including a season's high of 23 and the big Nick comeback several Sundays ago when they were down by 20 late in the third at Miami. Morning hits the free throw, and it's 28-26. Of course, Miami's problem all year is finding who can produce enough points. They know they have had Hardaway and Morning. And Mashburn was hurt, so P.J. Brown stepped up. But now you have to wonder about Hardaway. Tonight, they're getting it from the forwards. This is a big game for Mashburn for his credibility. Because you mentioned earlier, Dick, they sat him out in that fourth quarter because they were upset with his turnovers, his lack of defense. But tonight, he's come out and really putting on a show. 29 to 26 Miami leading with 8.23 to go in the first half and Larry Johnson fouled as he tried to spin. Keith Askins picking up his third foul and that's not good news for the Heat where Pat Riley is depending on Askins for his defense especially with Marley Hurdy. I agree 100 percent. 
If I'm coaching the Knicks, I am really upset with my pivot guy. The cutters are open time after time after time. The post guys refuse to kit, hit the cutters for the easy layups, and they continue to get in a war in back down one-on-one -on -one play. A.J. Brown, who leads the Heat with nine points, along with Alonzo Mourning back in the game. Larry Johnson has it kicked away, but last touched by the Heat. 14 come, seconds on the shot clock. Miami leading by three. They were up by five after the first quarter. Here is Sprewell, double team. They've been double teaming him quite a bit on the wing. Childs working against Hardaway. Chris Childs, and a goaltending is called. Chris Childs gets the basket, and uh, Alonzo Morning or Weatherspoon got in there and were guilty of goaltending. During the course of the season, Childs was a big scorer off the bench. In the playoffs, for whatever reason, he just cannot get going. Now, we know he did have the end of the season with a knee problem, but I like what we saw there. That was a nice explosion. Hardaway continues to struggle from long range, and his uh, three-point shooting is uh, non-existent in this series, something the Heat have counted on all year long. Knicks looking to take the lead. They trail most of the way in a close one. Sprewell with a high-arcing shot. And good physical contact inside. And there is Camby Look getting up. the loose ball. There He's got Sprewell, and the Knicks take the lead. There you go. And that's the quickness that the Knicks haven't shown in several years that Sprewell and Camby have given him this year. 30 to 29, New York. Main thing with Miami, stay within your offensive flow that has been good to you. And here is uh, Morton getting it out to Weatherspoon. Here is Porter. And he hits good ball movement by the Heat. They're not going to give you that flop. Now, I admit Terry Porter, as he came across, used that left arm. But he's been in this league for so long, it's almost you're not going to get it unless it's a flagrant push. Hey, he's 36 years old. He's been to the NBA Finals twice with the Portland Trailblazers. See that arm? He There's that play. arm. <laughs> now, you see, you can't flop. And, you know, guys realize that if you tried to put Sprewell down out in the corridor with that easy a bump, he would tear your head off. <laughs> Sure would. <laughs> it's a one-point game here in the second quarter. It was on this date in history that the Knicks won the draft lottery and the rights to select Patrick Ewing, who's been their cornerstone since 1985 and with the centerpiece of their fans, Spike Lee. What has he meant to you and the fans? Well, I got my season tickets for the Knicks the day after we got Patrick in the lottery, so I've been a season ticket holder as long as he's been here. Every team in the league is sorry for that. <laughs> I'll tell you that, except for the Knicks. Some people say they can't win with him. They can't win without him. How do you feel? We need Patrick, man. But we need a healthy Patrick. But uh, he's doing a lot. He's playing on one leg. That Achilles is killing him. All right, thanks. Good luck. Let's go back to Dick Huey. All right, Craig. And uh, Patrick Ewing in with foul trouble. And it's a good thing that the Knicks bench has come out as well as they have. They have uh, 11 points so far have outscored the, the bench 11 to 4 for Miami because of the foul trouble so they've come oh, a great beautiful. steal by Terry Porter and Porter gives the heat a three-point lead that was just a beautiful play by Terry Porter from the opposite side if I anticipating that pass all the way defense is what did it for the heat in game two that made the difference and they have played a pretty solid defense so far in the first half of this game here is Larry Johnson firing and missing from three. Johnson now one of four from the field and has scored only two points. See, in game one, he made three threes. So he came right back in game two, launched quite a few, didn't make. And then also tonight, it's easy to settle when your inside game isn't going well. Here is Morning looking at Dudley, and he fires and hits from long range. Alonzo Morning, who has been effective with his perimeter shooting of all things. And the Heat now lead by five, 35 to 30. Morning with 11 now. Here is Childs from the corner for three. And P.J. Brown, the rebound. The Miami Heat playing a very solid fundamental game tonight. Oh, they are. And, and you like what they're doing. They're staying with their offense. They're getting exactly what they want. Brown misses the shot, and they get it out to Sprewell. Miami gets back defensively, however. And the Knicks set it up, down by five. Porter is on Childs. Sprewell 
guarded by Hardaway, and that will be a technical free throw coming up as Pat Riley's heat pulled for their second illegal defense violation. Yeah, they catch they catch warning down inside. He was trying to release from his man who was on the pot on the box posting up. He was going to double team if Sprewell were to beat his man. Childs will go to the line to try to bring the Knicks to within four. Clarence Weatherspoon goes out of the game and replaced by Jamal Mashburn. And Patrick Ewing has come back in the game for the New York Knicks. Ewing with two personal fouls. Ewing was on the bench for eight minutes. But the Knicks hanging in there. Down by four. And they have the ball. Now right now, Jeff Van Gundy is staying with his quick lineup. Freewell penetrating doesn't get the basket but draws the foul and will go to the line. Now if you notice he made that in two bounces. He has such a long stride. He's got an excellent first step and then just watch this. You see he's got that big stride and he has the jumping ability. Now you look at him and you say well he looks like he's 6'2 or 6'3. Well he's six foot five with long arms and he has excellent sprint. Personal is on Jamal Mashburn, his second. Sprewell hits the first free throw, and he is a solid uh, shooter from the line at 81%. We're in Madison Square Garden for game three of the best of five first round battle between the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks. They've been to war in the playoffs for three straight years. Miami winning two years ago. The Knicks shocking the Heat last year in five as the number seven seed. It's one against eight. 1-1 one, one with the Knicks stealing one in Miami and a two-point game here in game three with under five minutes to go in the first half. Ewing picking up Porter and on the pick and roll, Camby scrapping with Morning and the ball goes out of bounds, last touched by New York. It Camby was late on that. Anytime that in the NBA where you want to screen and roll, they will spot that guy up right at the midpoint down on the baseline. But Camby knew that was coming. He was late. Nine on the shot clock for the Heat. Here's Morning. He's been effective from outside and remains so. So Alonzo Morning now with 13 points. Eight coming here in the second quarter. And five of ten for the field. And most of those have been from the perimeter. See what I like about that? See, that's smart basketball. Pat Riley knew that he had it the first time. He came right back with the same play. And Morning opened up for the open shot. Eight on the shot clock for the Knicks. Campy gets through on the pick and roll right down the middle, and Sprewell found him. And I'm saying that tandem gets it done, Sprewell and Campy. Well, Dick, it's about time that they're starting to look for the cutters. The cutters have been open throughout this entire half. Winding down the four minutes remaining in the first half. Tim Hardaway, who has scored only two points, doing it for other ways tonight. And Morning going in, and they get him for the offensive foul, the charge. And that'll be two on Zoe. That was a great, great defensive move, sacrificing his body by Latrell Sprewell. And when you think that's easy, you're taking Alonzo Morning at 6'10", over 250, right in the chest. So when you talk about Sprewell at 6'5", not being a small man against Zoe, he is a small yes, man. Yes, he is. You're right. <laughs> The Heat by two. The Knicks looking to tie it up with 3.45 remaining in the first half. The Childs, Houston, Camby, Sprewell, and Ewing who has the ball. Five on the shot clock. Ewing ties it up for New York at 37. Do you hear the murmur? I'm telling you. The, the, the murmur upstairs is, oh, 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 oh. I, good. Way to go, Patrick. <laughs> it is great. Well, he's four for five. That's right. And he's playing a, a very solid game here tonight. Score 3.15 to go. Crowd shouting defense as Porter misses. That was the trademark of the crowd when the Knicks won their championships back in 71 and 73 when Red Holtzman was the coach. Sprewell gets three more and the crowd erupts. The NBA Playoffs on TNT, brought to you by American Express. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. And by 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. 
Knicks have opened up their biggest lead of the game, 40 to 37. And in the duel between Alonzo Mourning and Patrick Ewing, the two former Georgetown big men, Mourning 13 points on 5 for 10, Ewing 8 points on 4 for 5. Pretty good matchup thus far. No, I like it. We know that they're not matched up against one another. Patrick, because of the lack of lateral movement, would be a fish in the water for Mourning. But you have to like what's going on. Once Springwell came in and they take Larry Johnson out, the team has been much quicker, and they're getting down the floor and take advantage of the mismatches. At the other end, Miami's doing a nice job getting what they want. They just have to stick because they're getting high percentage shots. There. Nick shooting 55% from the game. They shot 53% in winning game one. Here is morning. It does not count if it goes. Traveling is the call against Alonzo Morning, who shows a bit of frustration. And the Knicks with the ball and a three-point lead with 2.34 remaining in the first half. The Knicks getting it done from the bench with the front line of the starters. Each with two early fouls. The Nick bench have nearly half of their 40-point total. Ewing misfires from the corner, and the Heat trying to narrow the gap down by three. Now, if you're really zeroing in here, every time that Spreewell takes the ball off the dribble, they track it to force him to give it up. Dan Marley back in the game. Craig Sager talked about his problems with his shoulder. And this time, Alonzo Morning cannot connect from the perimeter. They got an advantage here. And the Knicks bring it up with two minutes to go in the first half. Spreewell got oh, look out. It converted a three-on-one for the Miami Heat. Mashburn wasn't ready for it. Now he wasn't. And the foul was called on the Knicks. Now, let me tell you what happened there, Dick. That was a good call by you. And I'm serious. Because they had a two-on-one so. and then a three-on-one, and then Mashburn slowed down because Mashburn thought that it wasn't going to happen for him. Here you go right here with Spreewell. Now, there it comes. As they're coming out here, now just watch in the left-hand lane. Mashburn slows down. See, Porter thought he was still running hard. He was not running hard. And then when you foul in a situation like this, you got to take it out on the side so you don't get the two-point layup. Go ahead, dude. No, Camby did a nice job, and he was in there. Yes, I mean, he gave him the quickness yes, and the shot does. blocking that they needed. Here is P.J. Brown missing from the corner, and Childs the rebound. So Camby out, Childs in, or Dudley, that is, for the Knicks. And the drive and a block by P.J. Brown. And the Heat getting it back, trailing still by three points. Hardaway for three, still struggling from beyond the arc. And the reason why we bring that up, Dick, and it's good that you keep underlining that, he only is shooting 11% in the first two games. We're talking about a guy who consistently shoots 40% in threes. And Brown running Patrick Ewing, missed the shot, and a foul on an ensuing play, and Alonzo Mourning close to getting a technical foul himself. Now that time, it'll be three on Mourning. Yeah, they front. They fronted Patrick that time in the post. And you can see Mourning's all upset right now. You just take your time and look for that lob pass. You see, he's calling for it. Now, once he gets down inside here, the help comes, and Patrick could not gain his balance. Now, you can see the guy who hit Patrick was Dudley. <laughs> That's right. It was his teammate. And that is why Morning was so upset, and he uh, still has a few words for Mike Mathis as he goes to the bench. Three fouls on Alonzo Mourning, and that is a blow to the Miami Heat because he really has been the lone consistent point maker for this team. The only good thing about it, Dick, the only good thing is you only have 11, uh, one minute and 10 seconds to go. That's all you got. So, fine. He's in there with three. That's a bonus. Coming up on the AT&T Halftime Report, Kenny Smith, Peter Vesey, and Ernie Johnson bring you up to date on the playoffs. Under a minute remaining in the first quarter. First half, a four-point lead for the New York Knicks, their biggest. Tipped away by Ewing and Mashburn. Marley for three, got it off in time. And the loose ball picked up first by Weatherspoon, then by Brown, and finally by Kyles. And a foul is called against P.J. Brown. Great hustle by the Knicks. Great and great hustle by Miami. I mean, we could, we could be calling this a scrum when that happens. I mean, everyone is going head first for every loose ball. That is a great description of what we've seen 
people were anticipating maybe some fights, which has been a history between these teams. It has been a great scrum, great hustle, and the diving for the loose balls has been something to behold. There is an awful lot of contact going on here anytime that there are screens away from the ball. And players are taking the hits and not retaliating by losing their cool. And it has not really cost them other than the one technical on Ewing. Chris Childs on the line. P.J. Brown with his second personal foul on Childs. And Terry Porter will check into the game, replacing Brown, who goes out with two. 38.4 seconds remain in the first half. The Knicks trailing throughout most of this half and then putting on a spurt toward the end of the second quarter. And it appears they will enjoy the lead at intermission. This is... Game three, the series tied one and one, and the Knicks on a 10 to nothing run in the last three minutes and 40 seconds. Nick Childs has been very solid, and it's nice to see him make the foul shots because coming into this in games one and two, Childs and Charlie Ward did not attempt one free throw attempt. 12 on the shot clock, and Mashburn off the rim. That's smart, hold for the last shot. And the crowd on its feet. Yes, indeed, they appreciate it. The Knicks. We're down by as many as eight, and they're leading by six. Final shot the Knicks are about to attempt in this first half. Houston driving. 1.4 on the clock. Allen Houston with 11 points, and that'll do it. And the Knicks will lead the court to cheers as they take a 45 to 37 lead over the Miami Heat at halftime and a brilliant 12 to nothing finish to this one of the world's great landmarks the Statue of Liberty actually it's out on Bedloe's Island barely on land as we welcome you back to New York City halftime here at game three of the best of five first round matchup between the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks and the Knicks lead by a score of 45 to 37 the Heat led most of the way in the half, uh, leading by eight points. And then the Knicks went on a 12-0 run, shooting 50% uh, to 35% for the Heat. And the Knicks got into foul trouble up front. Their bench did a tremendous job. But uh, I'll tell you what, it was the great 12 to nothing run, Hubie, down the stretch for the New York Knicks. They had to go to the bench, and I'll tell you, Latrell Sprewell, Marcus Camby really set the tone with their athleticism. Well, you have to like the fact that they're shooting 50%. Then they're also 10 for 13 on the foul line, so that's great. Bench is doing a terrific job. Miami, one of the best three-point shooting teams that we have in the league, 0 for 12 and threes. And then another fact, they were killing the Knicks on their offensive board. They had 10 in the first 13 minutes. Last 11 minutes, zero. The big donut. And that helped the Knicks get out. And talking about the threes, Tim Hardaway, one for 12 in the series in threes, and uh, that has been uh, the stock and trade of the Miami Heat. For more on Hardaway, let's send it over to Craig Sagan. Well, Dick, as you pointed out in the first half, we're not seeing the best of Tim Hardaway. In this playoff series a year ago, he averaged 26 points a game. This series, just five and a half. Now, it all goes back to late February. He was guarding Grand Hill when he hyperextended his right knee. He went down to the ground and did not play the following game. Since then, he has not been listed on the injury report. However, it's obvious that he is hurting. At today's shoot-around, we asked if we could talk to Tim Hardaway. He said yes, but if you ask about the knee, the injury, or anything about that, the interview is over. We talked to Pat Riley. He also would not use the knee as an excuse, but did say, all I know is what I see. And, of course, what we see is not the best of Tim Hardaway. Dick? All right, Craig, thank you very much. And the Miami Heat needs scoring behind uh, Alonzo Mourning. And you saw where Hardaway's uh, scoring has uh, dropped to this point since game one. And it wasn't anything to shout about there. Alonzo Mourning with 13 points. P.J. Brown having a very solid game with five for five from the line and five of their 10 offensive rebounds is next with nine. For the New York Knicks, it's their bench. Allen Houston, a starter, has 11. Sprewell has 10. But look at Childs and Camby, and uh, they're getting uh, some dividends from Chris Childs especially, Hubie. Yeah, I would like to say another thing about uh, Timmy Hardaway. You know, five times in his career he scored over 20 points, and it's so difficult for a guard in professional basketball to average 20 points and 10 assists. He has done that on two occasions. 
Now, that is so hard. Now, Oscar Robertson used to do that all the time. But, you know, we're talking about the normal guards in professional basketball. And it's, it's difficult to watch him out here. But you know what? He's still leading his team. He's making pinpoint passes. And he's trying to keep them going. And, of course, if your shooting isn't there, you can help the team in other ways as the Heat turns over their first possession. Ward open for the three and hits. Good way for the Knicks to start, and they're on a 15 to nothing run going back to the first half and lead by 11, 48 to 37. Now, Jolly really needed that. He was one for five in the first half, struggling in. Throughout this series, points have been very hard to come by. There's Dan Marley behind the arc, and he fires. In and out it goes, and the rebound by Ewing, who was hit in the face. Patrick Ewing was hit in the face. And uh, the Knicks bring it up four on five, and finally a timeout is called. It'll be a 20-second timeout called by the Knicks. Well, he went down hard. You can see it's in it's in the uh, upper part of his face. I think it was Tim Hardaway from behind that got him actually. Uh, Ray, it's right there. It over over the morning, back. Alonzo morning. Alonzo morning. 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 morning came right over the back and caught him. Morning right there. Yep. Yeah, I don't think Tim Hardaway would get up that high. In any event, uh, Patrick Ewing walking it off. And apparently, uh, all right, Ewing hit with a technical foul in the first half. Now, Patrick Ewing is walking by Mike Mathis right in front of our table, shaking his head, looking at Mike, because he's still hot over the technical foul. And, <laughs> and that chintzy call that he thought was chintzy <laughs> to get that offensive rebound. Larry Johnson inbounding to Kirk Thomas. Big front court hit with two personal fouls in the uh, first half. But no one in any real foul trouble here. Here is Ewing with a baseline turnaround. Patrick Ewing now with 11 points. And the Knicks up their lead to 13. Well, you know, the Knicks have the second-best home record in the Eastern Conference, only behind Orlando. And they ended the season with four straight wins at home. And they are playing well here tonight, Dick. Including one of the uh, victories against the Miami Heat. And here is Morning against Kurt Thomas. Nashburg for three. And once again, the Miami Heat really coming up empty. 0 for 14 from downtown. And the Knicks threatening to really open up a, a huge margin here in the third quarter. P.J. Brown made the Ewing change his shot. Might have gotten a piece of that one. So Miami coming back. The Heat, talk about the Knicks at home. 15 and 10 on the road. The best road record in the Eastern Conference. And no basket, the foul against the Heat away from the ball. So the basket doesn't count. And Alonzo Morning now has picked up his fourth personal foul. And Pat Riley will take him out of the game and bring in Clarence Weatherspoon. Now just watch on the pass off. You're going to see Ewing step right in front. Now that was just a bit. You never leave your feet going down the lane when your men go for it. Now that's critical for Pat. But Pat's going to have to keep a close eye on the score, but he's hoping that he can get down inside of 10 points with Ewing on the bench. Not an easy task no. with Morning on the bench, and uh, Allen Houston is fouled on a good pass inside by uh, Charlie Ward. Weatherspoon with his uh, first personal foul, and Allen Houston on the free throw line. Remember, he did not take part in the shoot-around today because of flu conditions. Well, his game right from the get-go tonight has been one of, I'm getting to the basket. He's over the fact that he had the six turnovers in game two, and I like his attitude tonight. He's playing with a lot of confidence. And he said, I have to match the aggressiveness of the defense, something he didn't do in game number two. The Knicks, they're on a 19 to nothing run. We'll take a timeout. The NBA Playoffs on TNT, brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. You don't have to live thirsty. Life is a sport. Drink it up. By E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. And by Nike. The Miami Heat have not scored in nearly seven minutes. The Knicks on a 19 and nothing run. Zoe on the sidelines with four fouls. And, of course, it's a decision time for a head coach in this situation. Well, you almost have a little less than 10 minutes to go. You're down 15. 
Now you're hoping that the group on the floor can either keep it at 15 to 13 or get it down below. But if this starts creeping, Riley's got to make a decision. And that decision is ring warning now. Forget about it. You've got to close the gap. You can't get down 20 to 25. Weatherspoon posting up against Kirk Thomas and hitting the shot. Clarence Weatherspoon, who's playing with a winning team for the first time and in the playoffs after years with Golden State and Philadelphia. Let's see with this small unit now if they can come with some strong defense. Now, in game two, they did. Anytime that morning took a break, which wasn't often, <laughs> but that this team responded and gave solid defense. But right now, we're not seeing that, Dick, in this run. Oh, you got Brown and Weatherspoon and Mashburn up front. The Knicks with two and a half minutes gone by. Kirk Thomas on a good feed from Allen Houston. And Thomas on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. There's a good feed, Weatherspoon. Oh, what a good fly. Kirk Thomas made the block, the former Miami Heat, with an outstanding defensive play. Charlie Ward gets it out to Larry Johnson for three. Oh, they're on fire now. That's what we said at the top of the show. They really play well in this building. And the point you made just a moment ago, as you look at the Weatherspoon getting fouled by Thomas, is to how long do you keep Alonzo Mourning on the bench when you're down by 18 points, even though you do have plenty of time to go here. Yeah, the well, yeah, he's going to ride it out for a while. All, not every coach is the same. All coaches have a clock in their head. They know exactly what they do. They play differently at home than they do on the road, and especially with a star player. Now, a lot of guys will say this. They'll gamble that because the guy is a star player that he's not going to pick up his fifth and then his sixth. Charlie Ward on the kick foul. So Alonzo Mourning on the bench with 13 points leading the Heat. P.J. Brown is next with nine. Mashburn with seven, but Brown and Mashburn did not score in the second quarter. Now you see, Hardaway and Mashburn have got to be able to give them something. Here is Brown with a fake. Harley gets it in to Weatherspoon, and Thomas gets another block. Thomas doing the job on Clarence Weatherspoon. See, we underline that point again. This is a very small team out there for Miami. Brown is your tallest guy, but he's not a post-up guy. He is like an afterthought, the fourth or fifth option on any play. And Hardaway, this is from the two-point range, and over the top it goes. So Hardaway, one for six tonight, shooting. And uh, that really has uh, handcuffed the Miami offense, which was never uh, tremendous to begin with. In game two, as well as they play. And as poorly as the Knicks played and shot so poorly, they still had a run and had a chance with inside of six minutes in that fourth quarter. And the Heat called for an illegal defense. And now, finally, uh, David Jones calls time, and I think they rescinded that. That would have been a uh, technical free throw. Technical foul. So they took it away, and the Knicks will just inbound. Inadvertent whistle by the officials. Allen Houston over Marley. Fouled by Marley as he got the arm of Allen Houston. Yeah, he got him that time. Now Marley's upset about it, no doubt about it. He was right up challenging the shot, but he thought he thought that he got ball. I thought that he got the lower part of the wrist. Thus, you agree with the uh, Oh, I think strike. it was a good call. So you Houston has been challenging Marley all night time. Now he knows, you know, he knows that he's under the weather himself, but he also knows that Marley is injured. And he is going right at him time and time again, and he's beating him tonight. Only 12 points for Houston in game two. He's got 15 right now. Under eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Marley misses from three, so the Miami Heat still shut out from three-point range. They are 0 for 15. But how about the fact that they're shut out in second shot? See, they started out the game, they were on dynamite. But then all of a sudden, that last 11 minutes, and now in this early part here, no second shots. Mashburn misses, and now the Knicks with a three-on-three. Three. Everything going their way. Knicks on a 26-2 run. 
going back to the late stages of the second quarter. Ten on the shot clock. Larry Johnson and Knicks playing with the verb of a team. Oh, boy. Everything working for them. No pressure on the Knicks, and Ewing hits it. He's got 13 points. It is a 22-point lead now for the Knicks. And Hardaway misses again, and a loose ball foul called against the Heat. And this is turning out to be a nightmare for Pat Riley and the Miami Heat. I see the people. They're just loving all of this. Now, right now, Riley's got to make a, a, a big statement here. You know, you got 6.57 to go, and it's creeping away from you. There is no presence on your inside game. You'd like to say you can post up Witherspoon. He's had his last two shots blocked. This is the guy. So what if he fouls out again? Because if you keep him on the bench right now, this thing could get to 25 to 30. Proud with their uh, comments on Pat Riley. And, of course, uh, no love lost between the New York fans and Riley in the manner in which he left New York. In his difference of opinion over authority and whatever with David Checkets, the Knicks president, and Riley going to Miami. And uh, there was some rancor uh, between the two. And Pat went uh, to Miami and uh, no longer a favorite here, to say the least. Well, you know, dude, but, you know, he's making a heck of a lot more money in Miami. That does he's, count. And he's won three straight division championships. So, you know, I, I think he's surviving all right. No, he's surviving. You're right, Hubie. Thomas hits the jumper. But what Riley wants more than anything is success on the floor. And he may get knocked out of the first round for the third time in four playoff years. Timeout. Incredibly, the New York Knicks on a 30-2 run. 63-39. We'll be right back. The Blazers trying to close out the Suns on our sister station, TBS Superstation in progress. Coming up next on TNT, the Jazz and Kings, game three in Sacramento. And uh, Commissioner David Stern in the audience and uh, enjoying the competitiveness. The Detroit Pistons winning, uh, defeating the Atlanta, Fal Atlanta Hawks tonight. And there is Dick Ebersol, the chairman of NBC Sports who our director Larry Cam remembers as a student at Yale and probably came back to teach Chris Dudley how to make that hook shot. <laughs> Charlie Ward fouling Tim Hardaway. So following the timeout, the Knicks still on that 30-2 run in front 63-39. to With uh, Alonzo Mourning out of the game for... Nearly four minutes. The lead has gone from 13 to 24 for the Knicks. Backing up your viewpoint that uh, we better go back to uh, morning sooner or later. Hardaway frustrated with a lot of things tonight. Slams the ball off of the backboard as Ward picks up his fourth personal. See, all coaches have agendas. All coaches have philosophy. These are decisions that you make. Now, right now, you have no idea whether my, R Riley is saying right now, you know what, we can't get it done tonight. I'm going to rest my horse. You don't know if he's thinking that way. Or he's saying, you know what, I'm going to keep him out to the beginning of the fourth quarter and then we'll make another run. But unfortunately for them, it's getting away. P.J. Brown misses and the rebound by you. And one thing you've always done is that you never been the mouthpiece for coaches because you've always said coaches know what they want they know their team better well of course they they not only know their team they also know what they're thinking about in the next game and they also know what, what this guy is feeling as he's sitting down there so but then when you put together your own philosophy dick you don't worry about what other people think of what you're doing this guy is a winning coach he's had all those division championships nine times out there in la three times down here in Miami, he took over a franchise that was struggling at the time, and now look what they're at. And it, you, you just got to give the guy a lot of credit. It's just not his night or the Heat's night. It's Allen Houston now with 17 points. And, uh, hey, Pat Riley, second winning as coach all time. Look at Miami, 10% shooting here in the second half. Weatherspoon, that doesn't go. And the Knicks, see, they have no one there. They have no one who can score on the boxes or in the paint because they're too small and they cannot elevate up over the top of Thomas and Patrick Ewing. 26-point lead for the Knicks with 4.40 to go in the third. Ewing 
This is the turnaround and uh, the foul committed. Uh, and it will be against a double foul, actually. It's uh, Kurt Thomas and Weatherspoon. No, really? P.J. <laughs> Brown and Thomas. Well, you know Thomas is going to be involved if there's a double foul someplace. You got to say, this guy's a tough dude. And right now, Van Gundy's taking him out, and he's bringing in uh, Camby. Now, these two guys in game one were absolutely terrific. 17 points, 15 rebounds, two blocks. Miami did a great job in shutting them down in game two. But tonight, they're making a lot of things happen with their presence out there. Camby with the... Uh, Three rebounds, four points, and a great presence is right as a potential shot blocker every time you go inside. Mashburn, turnaround over Johnson, hits. Long time coming. Yes. Jamal Mashburn now with nine, his first basket since the first quarter. They need this guy. And we say, why? He averaged 16 points a game for them, the third leading scorer on the team. And in the playoffs, only nine points. They need him to step up and play big and demand the ball in the sets. 28 games on the sidelines with that hyperextended knee, the contusion above the leg is Jeff Van Gundy, who we talk about futures. Jeff Van Gundy with a lot on the line. There's a lot of people think if the Knicks don't survive the first round, Van Gundy may not be around next year. A great feed from Hardaway into Mashburn, who has 11 points, 65 to 43. The lead is 22. Yeah, Mashburn just ran a beautiful back cut on the baseline, and Timmy threaded the needle with that pass. Brown defending Ewing, and the foul before the shot. I'll tell you, uh, if you look at Patrick tonight, Nick. He's really frisky in the basketball. You know, he's, he's playing with a lot of confidence offensively tonight. I didn't think that he had that in game two down there. You know, he was lumbering. Tonight he looks like he has some quickness. And Jimmy, I thought he was lumbering more in game one than in game two, although uh, obviously he was in pain for all of those games. But tonight, 13 points on 6 of 11 shooting and 7 rebounds. Ewing uh, hit his first three of the night, which set the tone for him. And meanwhile, P.J. Brown has just picked up his fifth personal foul, and Alonzo Mourning has come back in the game for the Heat, who are down by 23, and Ewing can make it 24. Patrick has not practiced since the last game. He just put his, his leg in ice, and then they give him all types of therapy. And, but he said that he was definitely playing tonight, definitely starting again, no question about it. Morning sat for nearly seven minutes, and the ball knocked away by Camby. It was Marcus Camby who quickness got in there, deflected the ball away. Every guy on the second unit tonight for the Knicks has done an excellent job, from Dudley to Child to Sprewell and to Camby. And most of them were forced in early because of the foul trouble. Ewing tipped away by Withers. And not only that, because Miami was massacring the Knicks on the glass. And anything that Van Gundy did was going to be plus. And when they came in, they changed the complete tempo of this game. You know, you're right. This game is a shock only because the way the Miami Heat played so soundly early on, especially with those 10 offensive boards. Sprewell works his way in. Cannot connect. And Ewing... Sore Achilles and all, diving for the loose ball, out of bounds. And it'll be Miami's ball. And cheers for Patrick Ewing with his great hustle. Well, the people appreciate the effort because they look up and you see that with a 24-point lead, that, the, you know, the team leader is, is out there and he's really hustling and trying to make it happen for you. Alonzo Mourning, who had eight points in the uh, second quarter, and is in foul trouble with four, now with 15 in the game, and again, a 22-point New York lead. Spraywell, along with Ewing, Ward, Johnson, and Camby. So the Knicks have their athleticism group in there now. Ewing. And there's Camby with an offensive rebound. Yeah, Jeff wants a timeout right now. He feels they're a little bit out of sync. He wants to talk to them. You only have two minutes to the end of this quarter. Not bad to be out of sync when you're up by 22. Yes. <laughs>
We'd like to show you the Knicks in action here tonight. This is just a strong move by Allen Houston. Jumper in your face. Now, on, the, on that break in the second quarter, Spreewell pulls up, hits that 18-footer. Now, right here, Patrick, no hesitation, and he's been that way all night. Now, Charlie Ward struggling, one for five in the first half. Boom, early in this third quarter, knocks in a three, and then Kurt Thomas on the baseline working hard. Nick shooting 49% for the game, and the big fella has just put it all together tonight. But how about that eye? That's when Alonzo Mourning came over the back when Ewing was going up for that rebound, and he caught him from the rear. Looks like they may stop the fight in the eighth round. <laughs> Under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Here is Marcus Camby in traffic, goes to Charlie Ward. Dudley, who come in for Ewing at center for the Knicks, gets the offensive rebound. Sprewell foul on the drive. Boy, Latrell Sprewell is a gazelle out there with his quickness going strong. Well, you see, he's not a great three-point shooter. He only shoots 28%, but he's a threat, and he attempts them. He'll take two or three a night. Now, as soon as that ball hit his hand, he gave the pump fake like he was taking the shot. The defender left his feet, and he is outstanding in blowing by it. And then he will take off, and he shoots that floater in the air. That's a very, very difficult shot, but he makes it. He shoots a high percentage. What keyed the whole thing as Keith Askins comes in for Tim Hardaway, who leaves with four personal fouls. Hardaway, by the way, only two points. And that becomes a lingering story in this series. Tim Hardaway's lack of offense be because of whatever reason we know about his injury. But I can't remember a 32-2 run, UB, in any game, much less a playoff game, which really has exploded this contest. Well, you see, most guys will go down inside to the post, and they'll try to go down in power. Well, during that period of time, Morning basically was sitting on the bench because of foul trouble the end of the second quarter, and then also when he picked up his fourth. So what happens is, is that you want to get fouled. So if you don't have one-on-one -on -one guys, you got to resort to post-up play. You're looking for guys to get fouled, get to the line, make the foul shots, so you get off the schneid. Brings an end to those strings. Correct. Strings. Correct. Morning with 17 after hitting that shot, and Latrell Sprewell coming back. Sprewell with 14 points at 22 in game one, as the Knicks won by 20 points. They're up by 24 here, with under a minute to go in the third, and Dudley pushing Alonzo Mourning, taunted by the crowd, and just stared them down. And Mourning will go to the line to shoot. Knicks over the limit. Well, Mourning has just been a real horse during the course of the season. He said that, you know, he's first in the league in blocks, fourth in field goal percentage, sixth in rebounds, 14th in scoring. He's fifth in the league in getting to the foul line nine times a game. And he has backed it up at, in the playoffs. And you've got to give him a lot of credit. He's having a sensational season. Coming into this game, Pat Riley was hoping that Morning, who did just about everything well, would give him a little more rebounding. He is struggling from the line tonight. Four for eight from the free throw line. It is 71-48 New York with under a minute to go in the third. Now, you and I have been around long enough that we have seen some incredible rallies in weird situations, okay? So we never give up on a game. Sprewell hits the jumper, and it's unlikely, but the one thing we have said about this series, you can expect the unexpected. And I'll tell you, what the Knicks are doing tonight was unexpected. Absolutely. 14 on the shot clock, half a minute remaining in the third quarter. Once we got out of that first quarter, shot attempts, good looks, few and far between for Miami. Haskins throwing the air ball from deep in the corner. Well, they're back on their heels. Nothing is crisp. Even the screens are half-hearted because the Knicks defense is very, very quick tonight. Crowd on its feet for the final seconds of the third quarter. Sprewell with a turnaround. And the time is going to run out. So the Miami Heat held to 12 points in the second quarter, scored only 11 in the third. The Knicks 28 to 11 inch and lead 73 to 48, a commanding bulge at the end of the third quarter.
Well, the Knicks went on that 32 to 2 run. I'm with John Starks right now, who was a spark plug for eight years for the Knicks, whether they were starting or the NBA Sixth Man Award. What were your thoughts when you saw that run? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, you know, it seemed like New York turned up the heat and uh, Miami couldn't buy a basket. You played for Pat Riley. You played for the Knicks. Who are you rooting for here? Uh, you know, uh, I'm kind of bipartisan because of, uh, you know, Riles and, uh, and that I played for New York. So uh, I think whatever team wins this game is the team that's going to win it all. The East is crazy. We know that. But you played in the West this year. Who's going to win out West? Oh, uh, it's hard to say right now. You know, uh, Utah right now got their hands full. I had picked them. But right now, they're looking kind of uh, trouble with some of the things that uh, Sacramento is throwing at them. So uh, I'm not sure it's wide open. L.A. starting to play a lot better now. Thanks a lot. Along with that 32-2 run, the biggest ovation tonight was for John Starks. Thank you, Craig. And you got to really wonder what uh, John Starks is feeling, Hubie, as uh, he watches part of this big team for so many years, traded for Sprewell, and seeing uh, uh, what has been a festive occasion here with the Knicks uh, on their way to taking a 2-1 lead. In the oh, no doubt about it. He was the heart and soul of the team for many years here. And you got to give him a ton of credit for the way he played, because he played with his heart, and the people loved him. When he came in that tunnel tonight, they put his picture on the overhead video, and they gave him a standing ovation. That does not happen often in this film. No. He was an assassin, and he's had his rough games, but yeah. you know what? That's what you want for the three-point shooter. Some good days and some bad. Mashburn misses on the turnaround. The Heat with Hardaway missing a three now. 0 for 17 from threes, but look at Miami scoring in the second and third. Well, the second and third quarter is just amazing what has happened here. But we told you, any time that you're going to get off the schneid like that, you must have an inside game or you have to have one-on-one -on -one players who can beat guys off the dribble and then get fouled or get a high percentage. It just did not happen. They stayed perimeter, and it's been that way for two quarters. The Knicks are leading by 25 points. They were trailing by five after one quarter in a 32-2 run. <laughs> Sparking it tonight and uh, morning going up after the whistle blew yeah. and a foul called against Chris Dudley five personals on Dudley Well that group that sits right there on the baseline they have been season ticket holders since the days of the old bar yes. There are 24 of them there to the left of the basket. They have been on morning all night long Dudley gets hit with a technical foul and of course you probably know the names of all time <laughs> <laughs> well, the one guy has the 24 tickets. <laughs> All, right. All right. A very good friend, Freddie Klein. And uh, he, you know, he's, these people have been in the old guy. They just moved over. They don't worry about the price of the ticket. They're here every night. It's amazing. It's an amazing group. You, mean, how, you often talk to the fans, didn't you? When you oh, yeah. Well, you have to do that when you're here. It relieves the pressure because you can't believe what these people say to you. <laughs> Even when you're winning. I mean, you can be winning. And yes, you know. Here to share with us all. Oh, no, 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 come on. We can't get into that. We got a game. There's a, there's a lot that, there are a lot of wonderful people who come here every night, just love the Knicks to death, and, and are very supportive. And especially when you're having tough times, when you have a lot of injuries and things of that nature, the people so if I come down talk to you before the game. We we'll appreciate what you do here. Larry Johnson hits his second three. He has eight points. But you had to love the experience of coaching here. Oh, yeah. Well, the only trouble is, is that when them things, if they really get out of hand, the thing that you have to always overcome in New York, no matter what sport you're coaching, is the media. <laughs> That's the one that you have to uh, be able to withstand and keep your sanity. And Chris Childs fouling Tim Hardaway in the air. And I think he's going to have a three shot foul coming up. Hardaway will go to the line for three when we come back to Madison Square Garden. Some of the people now watch Little Big League. That's all coming up on TNT. Here's Craig Sager. Well, Dick, front row, the celebrity role, but a guy who's been here all the time, Kevin Bacon, even back before Hubie was coaching. What do you think of the Knicks tonight? It's a lot of fun to watch him tonight, man. It's, it's one of the... My son said to me, uh, Dad, what's the best game you ever saw the Knicks play? And I turned to him about five minutes ago. I said, you know what? This may be it. Travis, obviously you're a big Knicks fan. Who do you like best on the team? Um, I like Patrick Ewing the best. Why? Well, because he's been around for so long and he still gets right in there. Thanks a lot, Travis. There's two generations of Knicks fans. Dick. Travis wants to take our job, apparently, Craig. Uh, 
but some pretty good comments. Kevin Bacon, remember the other night we were talking about Jack Nicholson? He came, he knew the truth. Well, Kevin Bacon was the Army's or the Marine attorney in that uh, movie. They both starred in it. Tim Hardaway makes two out of three free throws. And the Knicks are up by 25 points with two and a half minutes virtually gone by here in the fourth. Chris Childs with the Latrell Sprewell. Chris Dudley along with uh, Marcus Camby and Larry Johnson. Patrick Ewing getting the much needed rest. Johnson who hit a three moments ago. This is here, but Sprewell winds up with it. Working against Terry Porter. And a foul. Morning came over to help, but you saw Sprewell's quickness against Porter going baseline, and the foul is against Porter. See, in game two, Porter was able to level Sprewell off at any time that he made a spin. You know, Terry was right there, or the rotate man was able to come in, help, and either take a charge or get a shot block. Now, tonight, we are seeing none of that. Sprewell making good on the first free throw. He has 17 points. Allen Houston and Sprewell each with 17. Patrick Ewing on the bench with 15. Sprewell now takes over the scoring lead. And uh, without very much, you'll see Patrick Ewing with the sore Achilles the rest of this game. So there he just the There it goes. Lead and Marcus Camby with a steal. Tell you one thing, it was a different team when they had Oakley and Stark. Different style. But I'll tell you, the crowd loves the wide open play with Sprewell and Camby. Well, let's let's see how far they go in the playoffs. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's always the bottom line. Right now they love it. That's right. And if they win this game, they're ahead two games to one. That's all. Doesn't mean whether you win by one or 30. The main thing is it puts the pressure on the Heat to come back and even the series. Right, they won one in our house. We've still got a chance to win one in their house. And right now we're having words here with Childs and Hardaway. You know, face to face, and uh, you know, Mike Mass is pleading to Hardaway. We really don't need this. Come on, this game is out of hand. Let's just play. Hardaway uh, committing his fifth personal foul. And now uh, David Jones comes over, and uh, they're still going at each yeah, other. Yeah, right. This is interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that Nick. Finally went over to move Childs away. Yeah. And that was Dudley. It's got to be frustrating for the Heat and uh, none more than Tim Hardaway. Can't do, now. can't do the things he's done. And now morning going over to Mike Mathis. And you got to watch. Don't put your hands on uh, the official. Yeah. And right now. They, they just had enough of whatever. They got to watch Timmy to take the next step. You don't want to be yeah. suspended for a future game. That's right, see? And he usually doesn't, he usually doesn't explode. You know, he might have some words with people. Now, just keep an eye on this right here. Now, we're looking for it here. Now, Hardaway is coming through here. Childs is going to try to front him. We told you, he's an excellent defender. He's not going to let you post up. <laughs> Now you can see, he, well, well, what he did was, you know, by throwing his rear into him and then also clearing him out, they call the offensive foul. Well, Timmy is kind of stunned, so he had words both ways. He had words for the referee, and he also had words for Giles. And, of course, at this point, the last thing Pat Riley wanted was to see any possible ejections for the next game. That has happened, I believe, in uh, the playoff series the last two years between these teams. We told you early on, Childs is a very, very good defender, and he's going to fight you when you blow down in that post-up area. Post and Childs is a lot more difficult than post and Charlie Ward. So it went as a double technical for Hardaway and Childs and a second tee on Hardaway who was ejected. Tim Hardaway wound up with five points on one for eight shooting tonight. Yeah, it's just been a horrible evening for Tim. 30-point lead for the Knicks. Morning. And the rebound by Camby. But who would have thought when the Knicks winning by 20 in game one that we would have an even bigger potential blowout 
here in game three. Morning blocking Sprewell, but the Knicks keep the ball. And what entertainment this has to be for the Knicks crowd. Well, see, Van Gundy wanted a goal set. Van Gundy and the Knicks all thought that that ball was taken off the glass. Terry Porter now the point guard feeding Nashburn, who hits the three. And that is the first three-point basket tonight for the Miami Heat, who are one for 18. Now, this is a team that shoots during the year. You know, they, they usually will attempt 16 during the course of the season and then shoot 36%. But tonight, it's just been horrendous. 81-54 as uh, Houston is fouled before the shot. Bashan Leonard has uh, checked into the game and commits the foul. Leonard not pleased at all in not seeing action in game number two. Believe it or not, coming into this game, Leonard was second on the team with an 11-point average, didn't even play in game two. Yeah, but they're upset because when he came back, he gained weight after he came back and was practicing. Seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The New York Knicks running away from the Miami Heat. A 32-2 run. Late in the second and through the third, the difference here. The Blazers and the Suns on our sister station, TBS, in progress. Coming up next on TNT, game three between the Jazz and the Kings. All even one and one to play at Sacramento. There is Marv Albert, the radio voice of the New York Knicks, who had uh, the pleasure of calling that exciting Indiana Milwaukee game last night, won by the Pacers, and will be on the air tomorrow as well. So Marv Albert traveling nearly as much as we are, Hubie. <laughs> I'd say this Knicks second unit has just been outstanding. In the second quarter and in since they've come in the game, they're showing us all of their wares. Whether it's offense, defense, shot blocking, running, it, it's just been nice to watch. A lot of excitement here. Marcus Camby with the turnaround, and uh, Camby now with eight points, but has played well, very active on both ends of the floor. Mashburn was out there with Leonard, Weatherspoon, Morning, and Porter. Hardaway ejected with two technical fouls. Mashburn tried to bank up the turnaround shot, and a foul called against the Knicks. It's on Chris Childs, will send Alonzo Morning to the line. And Dwayne Coswell is going to come in the game. Morning won't go up the line, he'll go to the bench. Here's Dwayne Coswell, a nine year veteran from Temple who played in the regular season finale when uh, Alonzo Mourning sat out. And the Mourning leaves the game with 18 points. And uh, you won't be seeing Alonzo again until game number four Friday night here in Madison Square Garden. Well, Terry Porter has just been such a outstanding selection by Pat Ryan. He was at Portland for so many productive years last three in Minnesota and now he came down here to Miami gave them 10 points a game an excellent defender allowed him a Hardaway and Porter and he probably won six to eight games with his major contribution Pat Riley loved him from the start he said he's a big play warrior and I respected him when he was played with Portland and I coached LA and the question is would he hold up in the minutes he's played he's played over 27 minutes and he did hold up uh, he's, he's having a nice playoff he's been very consistent 620 to go in the game and it's 83 to 56 in favor of the Knicks here is Sprewell firing over Mashburn and Latrell Sprewell with 20 points tonight he is the Knicks leading scorer. Allen Houston has 18, and Patrick Ewing, who is on the bench the rest of the game with 15. And the Knicks with a great performance by their reserves. But Sean Leonard hitting a three with under six minutes to go. 26-point lead by the Knicks. Their biggest lead was 30. Well, I'd like to see the Sean Leonard get some work here tonight because in game one, he did a nice job for Miami. And in that way, that would give them another productive guy on the outside who could come in and possibly helping in game four. Now, you go back to last year, 
you know, this young guy really stepped in and was a major starter for them. Three-point player. They could count on him for scoring, you know, large amounts of points in big games. And Leonard committing the pushing foul, and now both benches will empty Rick Brunson, a second-year point guard from Temple who had 11 assists in the final regular season game uh, against the Miami Heat has come in, and Rex Walters, who uh, saw plenty of action this year for the Heat as a backup point guard. Walters uh, averaging 15 minutes had played with uh, New Jersey and Philadelphia previously and started most of the year for New Jersey. Well, he did a very good job when Marley was having his problems. They had to play Marley at small forward when Mashburn was out. Rex Walters teamed with Hardaway, and they really did a nice job. And then as each guy came back, unfortunately for Rex Walters, his time was cut back, and then he went to the bench. But he was very big in helping them win this division championship. Can be fouled going to the basket. The Heat also had brought in Mark Strickland. As you look at our uh, lineup with the Blazers' sons going on now in Phoenix and the Jazz and Kings coming up next, Mark Strickland, who suffered a broken nose when he was inadvertently hit by Dikembe Mutombo, a high-energy player, has uh, come in the game, played three minutes in game number one, and wearing that mask. Those are Strickland's uh, playoff uh, numbers as Kurt Thomas will come in and a hand for Latrell Sprewell as he goes out. Sprewell with 20 points and five rebounds. And a lot of hugs on the sideline for the New York Knicks. 520 to go in the game. The Knicks lead at 86 to 59 and headed for a two to one lead in this best of five. Here's Walters missing a three and Thomas getting the rebound. So the Knicks have Childs with Brunson, Camby, Thomas. And Dudley. Let's not forget Dudley. Yeah, what you want out here right now is, what, you know, everybody calls this garbage time, but it's not garbage time for the guys who are on the floor. I've never used that term. Yeah, that's correct. But you read about it all the time in the paper, and a lot of people will talk I about it. It cheapens the game a that's little. That's right. And what you do right now is you look at these guys. To them, the, this is meaningful minutes because we're talking about they've been on the floor now for seven minutes. Now, what you're trying to do as a coach is you're trying to get them to run the stuff and make sure they play hard, try to be unselfish, stay within what we do, because who knows which one of you might be a key guy in this game for us off the bench in game four. Great point. You never know who will get into foul trouble when you're going to an extra guy. Brunson showed what he could do. Oh, he, last Wednesday night here, you and I, and he put on a show. Yes, he did. He, he only had one turnover, 11 assists. He made great decisions. Kickball and a new 24 second clock for the New York Knicks. I like what Jeff Van Gundy told you and I, and that was that Brunson makes better decisions off of the screen and rolls and screen and spot ups than Childs or Charlie Ward. But right now, as he, he needs to improve his shooting because he's only a 35% shooter. But as for the moxie and all of that, he's really got it. Thomas missing and getting his own rebound in the corner. And Kurt Thomas with a drive, and Marcus Camby cleans up. So Camby now with 11 points. See, that's what they like about Camby. He comes from the other side of the lane. See, in many matchups, he gets overpowered by strong centers or strong power forwards. But when he can come off and help in your rotation, he becomes a shot blocker, a good interceptor, a guy who causes deflections, and really enhances the defense. Five for six from the field for Camby as Leonard works his way in. The Knicks leading 89 to 61. And uh, setting up a game four Friday night with a chance for the Knicks to eliminate the Miami Heat for the second straight year in the first round. Last year, the Knicks won in five, winning game five in Miami. They have a chance to win it in four games as Brunson drives in for the layup. And that would be two years in a row if the Knicks can do it. But you know that the Miami Heat, Pat Riley, always has this team coming back when they're in a desperate state, and they will be in a desperate state on Friday. Well, they're a very sound team. You know that they're injured, but all he has to do is get them up for one game, and that is they, this 
is it. This is it or you go home. So you know that when they come out here on Friday night, it is really going to be extremely physical. His game plan for a quarter and two minutes was outstanding. But the key thing is when you're coaching at the other end, you just got to convince your guys. We're playing good defense. They're shooting, but they're missing. If you will just do your business and take care of the defensive boards, we're not going to get hurt here. And that's what happened. They stopped them from getting second shots, and then they ran them to death in the open floor. And you got to give the Knicks a ton of credit. Their defensive game plan by their coaching staff tonight. Outstanding. He just went back for it. Wayne Coswell hit the free throws, but uh, a very good point because the way this game started out, the Miami Heat opening up an eight-point lead, and it looked as if the Heat were going to grab command because of those ten offensive rebounds because in a game like this, aggressiveness is what sets the tone. You know, you always... Remember, Dick, that you, you can tinker with your adjustments, and that's what you do. But you have to have players who can execute what you're trying to do against the other players. And then we all know that the three guys referee in the game set a style and a tempo for that night, and it changes from game to game. Rashawn Leonard, who has uh, lit it up since coming in, hitting two threes, now has eight points in the game, 91. The 66 to score as we wind down the three minutes to go. Are you worrying about him gaining weight? Uh, are you? Are we? He saying? looks in shape. So <laughs> he looks in shape. What's that? What is he talking about? That, 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 that's really good. But those people close to the Miami Heat are aware of uh, some of the things that go on with the team. Walters firing from three and in and out. The rebound by Herb Williams is in the game. Herb Williams in his 18th year, the oldest player in the NBA. Well, all the young guys in the league have no idea that when he played for the Indiana Pacers, he was an 18-point-a-game guy and a double-figure rebounder, an outstanding player. It's only all of his averages have just dropped because of the years here with the Knicks where he's nothing more than a good practice player. He helps the coaches. He'll probably be a coach in this league once he retires. Everybody respects his leadership. They respect his work ethic. And they really think that he's going to be an outstanding coach in the future. Timeout with 2.05 to go. Vashon Leonard on the free throw line makes the first. Tonight's game produced by Jeff Benke and directed by Larry Cam. Jim Allen and Jeff Randolph also part of our crew. Marty Aronoff, our statistician. And the New York Knicks headed for a 2-1 to one lead and uh, a chance to become only the second team in NBA history for a number eight seed to knock off a number one in the opening round. It happened once. And that was when Denver beat Seattle back in 94 in the West. And that was a happening. <laughs> that was a big upset. Here is Brunson driving in and, and getting the lane. 93 to 68. Rex Walters on the outside. And uh, Leonard hitting the three over Charles Child. So... Rashawn Leonard now with three from downtown, 93 to 71. What he just did is so difficult. He just ran from the opposite corner, up the lane, off the two screens, caught the ball, turned in the air, and made a shot from about 25 feet. And making the most of his time when you talk about uh, yes, he is. the final garbage time, so to speak, he is showing what he can do. Here's Craig Sager. Well, Dick, it's time to put a face to a name. You heard Hubie talk about Freddie Klein. Some people have left early, but not this guy. Tell us about your loyalty to the Knicks. I, I'm very loyal to the Knicks. I've had these same seats since 1959. That's 40 years. I want to kill this girl in back of me. <laughs> and I promise Hubie Brown I wear a hip piece for this, but I changed my mind. <laughs> 40 years. How has the price changed in 40 years for the price of this ticket? Well, my seats are 175 now. And the playoffs are 225. This would be $2.5. And the first row, years ago, the season ticket was like $70. <laughs> how, do you, how many season tickets do you have now? I have now about eight. I used to have about 46. <laughs> he never leaves. He hasn't missed but 15 games in 40 years, Dick. Well, you know him real well. Oh, I do. He's a wonderful character, and he's a great friend to any coach who has ever worked here in New York, and also to all of the players. He's associated with the Carnegie Deli for years and years and years, one of the owners. 
and then also with the stage deli. He's a, uh, a broker of restaurants, etc. here in New York City. One, wonderful guy. Real fun person. Throw the pastrami on Rye. There you go. Special there, right? Jazz and the Kings coming up next. 1-1 one, one in that series. We have 38 seconds remaining. Latrell Sprewell led the Knicks tonight with 20 points. Allen Houston got off to a good start and had 18. Patrick Ewing getting some rest for his sore Achilles tendon. 15 points and 8 rebounds in 26 minutes. And Marcus Camby coming off the bench. 13 points and 9 rebounds. And the bench immediately gave the Knicks production tonight. Great effort, great, great game plan, beautiful execution by the players. Alonzo Morning with 18 points, leading the Heat, no basket. Tim Hardaway, one for eight before he was ejected, and Marley 0 for five from the field, but you know the Miami Heat will regroup. A veteran team, you know that they'll come back. But we got to remember now that the Knicks are hot. This is their fifth straight win at home now. They're playing with a ton of confidence in this building. And there you see Sprewell with his arms raised and the crowd yelling. And the final seconds of the game and the crowd on its feet. No dramatics tonight. Just a thrashing by the New York Knicks over the Miami Heat beating them to take a two to one lead and game four Friday here at the Garden with a chance for the Knicks to knock off the team with the best record in the Eastern Conference.